other minerals have left an indelible mark on this limestone landscape. Long ago, volcanic activity deep below the surface forced hot liquids and gases up through cracks in these overlying rocks. They deposited valuable vein minerals, and in particular, lead. Lead has been mined on these moorlands since long before the Romans came. It reached its peak around the mid-1800s. Lead mining had become a huge industry and it covered these one-time quiet hills with industrial activity. What remains today tells a story of engineering ingenuity and professional craftsmanship. But most of all, it evokes images of back-breaking labour in difficult, uncomfortable and often dangerous conditions. Many of the men that worked in these mines often came from far afield, some from abroad. They were forced to travel wherever there was work to be had. Hard, dirty and often dangerous work was what they were used to. Some mines were highly successful, others were less lucky. There was no knowing how rich in ore the seam would be until you reached it. Those that worked underground were mostly paid according to the ore they produced. If the vein was a rich one, they could earn good money. Often though, after months of driving a long level with little more than hand tools, the vein would prove less productive than they'd anticipated or even sterile. Young boys often worked with their fathers. A whole family's well-being depended on how much lead they found. The life was dangerous and in the constantly cold, damp environment, the life expectancy was short. But always in such work, the close bond of comradeship proved some sort of compensation. When towards the end of the century, the usage and price of the lead declined, the mines closed, and the men were forced to seek employment elsewhere. But their mark on these moorlands will remain forever. Today, the quarries occasionally uncover the veins where the miners once worked. Shiny black patches of galena, the lead ore, are still visible. But there are also cavities almost too small to lie in, where the ore has been removed. The lead that they mined can still be seen in the older buildings. Water pipes, roofs, gas pipes, and later even electrical cables were encased in lead. Our churches still glory in their beautiful leaded windows, but the lead that we require today is much cheaper to import from abroad. In the veins, alongside the lead, was a crystalline material called fluorospar, chemically calcium fluoride. The miners had little use for it and discarded it. However, in the 1960s, there was a short period when it became much sought after as a flux in producing steel for the car industry. A few enterprising individuals made quick money by reworking the mine tips 
and a couple of easily accessible mines. It was short-lived. The British steel industry was also soon in decline. Fluoride, like lead, is now mostly imported from abroad. It is widely used in the manufacture of glass, particularly for high quality lenses. It is therefore ironic that fluoric acid is renowned as the only acid that is capable of dissolving glass. The industry and the miners' way of life have both gone from the Dales. To the industrial archaeologists, these remains are evidence of a rich culture. But there are also those that consider them to be an eyesore that has partly destroyed a precious natural environment. How then will future generations look upon the bigger, more permanent scars that our generation is making upon the landscape? <laughs>